Welcome back to the Shugly Shed. I'm Ewan. Uh, I know two episodes in the space of a week um, after having nothing for a few months. Um, as you saw, if you did watch the last episode, I was kind of in a bit of a rut motivationally um, and I was kind of, after finishing the GS500 build, just a little bit, yeah, just lacking motivation to be honest, to, to get on with anything else. Um, so I have actually sort of come out of that rut and out the other side, I had a couple of wee side projects that you might have seen um, in the last last episode. Uh, if you remember the um, ZX6R, the Kawasaki sports bike that I had been recommissioning for my friend Ian. Um, well, Ian was uh, pretty pleased with the, the work on that bike and it sailed through its MOT. Um, so he's really chuffed to see that back on the road after 14 years. And uh, on the back of that, wee piece of work. Um, Ian has entrusted me to take on a custom project for him. Basically, to give you a bit of background, Ian is a baker. He runs Big Bear Bakery in the south side of Glasgow. Uh, they also um, stock quite a few uh, cafes and things around the city. Uh, Ian is, is a total wizard baker. Um, his stuff is unbelievable. People queue for hours to get their hands on his baked goods. Um, I came to know Ian by chance and we got chatting about motorbikes. Um, I found out that he was keen to, to get a wee custom project on the go after getting his uh, ZX6R back on the road. So that's pretty much where we're at. I forwarded a few links to Ian. He went to check out a few bikes uh, for, for sale online and we have picked one and we have bought it and we've got it back to the garage and I'm going to show you it now. This, my friends, is a 1979 Kawasaki Z400. Um, that's falling off, that's all right. This was basically, I think, someone's little cafe project. They've got, it's got these wee clip-ons on it um, and it's had a tiny bit of work done to it. It's had this aftermarket electronic ignition fitted, uh, but then it was basically abandoned in a shed. Um, I believe it was running three years ago, uh, but I think we have possibly low compression in the cylinders, so we want to check that out first and foremost before we do any, any major work to it. Um, but this is the donor bike for this build. Check it out in all its rusty glory. <laughs> We also have a pile of parts, side panels, uh, two tanks, original seats. We're not sure we're going to use those. We're probably going to go for a sort of flat, scrambler style seat. Um, but aside from that, uh, the bike is pretty much uh, a blank canvas for us. So we haven't really come up with a definitive plan yet. Um, but like I say, it, we kind of want to go for this sort of scrambler um, sort of street scrambler kind of vibe, quite similar to the XS250 that I did uh, last year. Um, Ian basically just wants a nice looking stylish bike that's fun to ride, um, low maintenance uh, and sort of nice weather bike um, that can still get up to speed fairly happily and um, so 400cc run you know falls, falls into that niche quite nicely. Um, it's got a little bit more you know un under, the, under, the, under the bonnet, that's not right, it's a bike under the tank and uh, then my 250 and um, the 400 is, is pretty much ideal for that and um, it's actually size wise they're still quite small bikes I think they were kind of billed as commuter bikes alongside like VW Beetles and things like that and um, back in the day they were designed to be sort of small and sort of city city going bikes but um, it means that they actually they handle quite nicely through the twisties apparently and um, it means they, they manoeuvre through traffic quite nicely as well, so it fits that sort of street scrambler bill um, pretty perfectly. Working front to back, it's got lovely spoked wheels um, that I'm really jealous of. I'd love a set of spoked wheels on my XS250. Uh, I think there was a model of XS250 that had spoked wheels, but alas, not my one. Um, they're actually in not bad condition. The chrome is in reasonable nick. Here's a bit of pitting. Um, it's just the spokes are pretty rusty. Uh, so, kind of not sure what we're going to do about these. Um, I think we are quite keen on black wheels, so we might look into getting these blasted and powder coated. Uh, I'm, I'm unsure as to whether or not it's worth breaking the wheels down to do that or to get them powder coated as one unit. I know it's a bit of a workaround to powder coat a uh, spoked wheel in one piece, but 
Um, I know people do it and it does work and it's one of these things that for sort of time and money um, it might be the best solution for the time being and then perhaps uh, in the future we can look into doing it properly um, but it would be you know something to investigate straight away anyway. Moving on from there, uh, the forks will obviously need rebuilt, the, the seals are away on them and um, it's got these gaiters on but as far as I can see the chrome's actually not in too bad condition we may get away without having to do anything else to those other than a rebuild and powder coating the lures that would be nice and um, need to get the the sort of shrouds off here and, and see a little bit more of what they're like and um, headlight is pretty toasted to be honest I think it was blue and um, someone's rattle canned it black at some point and the chrome is beyond saving so not sure Perhaps a, an aftermarket headlight or maybe recondition this one, not entirely sure yet. Uh, the clip-ons are GTF, um, don't want these, they're just cheap Chinese clip-ons. So they're going, uh, we've got the original um, risers here, so we'll probably be putting uh, for flat scrambler style bars back on it, which would be nice. I uh, don't really want the, the clip-on style, we're going for the sort of scrambler style. And um, just need to get the, the top clamps to go on there. Um, frame of course will need stripped and powder coated, it is pretty rusty but structurally seems to be okay. I need a proper investigation um, when we get it stripped but the wiring is totally harebrained so a full new full new wiring loom I imagine. Um, the engine, so the engine although it looks relatively clean uh, that's actually been rattle canned at some point and um, just everything seems to be just painted silver. Um, so, not entirely sure, maybe someone just trying to give it a quick GP refresh, but either way, um, I would need to basically check the, the health of this engine. I need to check the compression, I want to, apparently it's got no spark just now, so we need to figure out the, the cause of that problem. Um, check the compression, uh, check the oil in it, make sure um, everything in it is, is healthy enough uh, to have a go at getting it started. That would be nice just to hear the engine run before we delve too deep into, into the build. Uh, I'm not too worried about it, there's loads of spare parts available um, and if it needs a wee top end rebuild, uh, well that's that's just something else to get involved with, so I'm, I'm not worried about that just now. Carbs again are pretty rusty, but nothing, a uh, bit of elbow grease and perhaps a little bit of powder coating or painting these tops. Um, won't fix, so that'd be nice. Uh, we've got the original airbox, there's no rubbers, so we need to either get a hold of rubbers or perhaps go with pods. I know Ian's quite keen on pod filters. Uh, I am hesitant to put pods on it, purely from the, the tuning point of view, um, but uh, maybe we can do some research and see if anyone else has put pods on it and if there's any jetting we can do that, that would make it run better. So that's something to investigate at some point as well. All the old chrome is pretty not chrome anymore, uh, lots of rust just about everywhere, kickstart and all the, the tensioners and stuff at the back and the, the, the brake actuator is all, all pretty rusty. So all that stuff will just probably get stripped and blasted and powder coated um, to make it nice and fresh for, for reassembly so that's an easy, an easy thing to get done. Uh, the swing arm bearings I don't know if you can see that, but the swing arm is fairly loose there. <laughs> so the swing arm bearings are completely away. So it'll all get stripped to get powder coated, so those bearings will be refreshed as well. Not really sure what the script is with the back of the frame. Um, I don't know, I think it might have been chopped already, or was that stock? It doesn't look chopped, but I, I'm willing to, you know, perhaps, yeah, I think it has been chopped. Um, so it, it's been chopped already. Uh, perhaps someone was going to go for a cafe racer hump, which is why they've left this sort of wishbone thing here. Uh, we'll probably take this off and weld some kind of hoop, either a flat one or a wee kick one, like I've got on the XS250, depending on tyre clearance and what tyres we're going to go for. We'll sort of decide on that a wee bit, a wee bit later. Uh, but again, just a sort of classic uh, hoop on there, welded in place. Probably going to replace these shock absorbers. They are beyond saving, beyond economical repair, as they say. Uh, don't know what we're going to go for yet. Um, I quite would quite like to see some Hagons on here, just a bit of bling for suspension. Really good value shocks uh, made in the UK, um, so that would be a good upgrade for this bike. 
matching the front. We've got uh, another spoked wheel on the back. Uh, this, I think, has been rattle canned, unfortunately. Uh, it's pretty horrible. Weird kind of rusty silver paint and the, the chrome is in much worse condition on the back wheel here. It tends to always be in worse condition on the back just because it gets, uh, it gets a bit more grubby and people don't clean the back of their bikes as often as they should. So that chrome is, yeah, definitely, definitely thinking about the powder coating route for these wheels. We've got the original exhaust. It's a uh, two into two into one, as you can see. And the original muffler that's actually in not bad condition. Uh, it's got a little bit of pitting, but I think that would polish up quite nicely. Uh, we don't really want this style of muffler and I would hesitate to go chopping that uh, because there might be someone out there that might pay good money for it um, in its reasonably good condition, uh, someone doing a restoration job. So I, I am perhaps thinking about a custom exhaust all the way from the headers. I've never really done that before. Uh, but that would be a, a cool challenge to throw into this bike. Something, I don't know, maybe some high mount exhausts for a sort of scrambler look. Who knows? Need to chat with Ian and see what his, what his thoughts are on that. As with most rebuilds, it'll probably new chain and sprockets. They're actually not in too bad condition, but pretty manky and grubby. So they'll be getting chucked and replaced. Uh, we're probably going to lose the centre stand, just go for a side stand. Currently doesn't have a side stand on it, but I'm sure we'll find something to fit. The casings are pretty oxidised and the, the head appears to have been, the cylinders in the head appears to have been rattle canned at some point. I'd like to look down the, the, the path of getting it vapour blasted. I know that there are places that vapour blast a complete engine. You basically plug up all the holes and because vapour blasting is relatively uh, gentle, it's a gentle process, you can vapour blast a, a, a complete engine. So I'd be quite keen to get that done. If we can check the health of the engine, then drop the engine out, get it vapour blasted nice and clean, and then, you know, take the side covers off and replace all the gaskets and things. That would be that would be quite nice, I think, just to just to really get in about the engine and make it nice and clean without going to the, the full hassle of like I did on the on the iron girder of a complete engine rebuild and painting. I, I quite like raw aluminium engines, uh, so that would be that would be my preferred option here. But again, we need to chat to, to Ian and see what his thoughts are. No front brake, which is a bit of an issue. Uh, just didn't come with one. Don't know what happened to it, but it's not there. Uh, these are actually relatively hard to come by. There's a few online on, on a popular auction website, eBay, and they are hideously priced. Some of them are like over a hundred pounds for a brake caliper and I'm not entirely sure why, but it's a kind of weird mount here, these sort of two mounts up here, that, and it hangs off of like almost another mount, and it's a little single piston opposed tiny little caliper. Probably is pretty pants, to be honest. So I would quite like to have a look at perhaps fashioning a different brake mount and fixing a more modern caliper onto here just to get a bit more performance out of it. I would be quite keen to investigate that. Nothing, not, not done anything like that before, but I think that might be something worth worth a go. So yeah, that's, I think that's a, a fair introduction to this project and I hope you get an, a, an idea for what we're, what, what we're gonna do to it. I'm not planning on documenting this one as in depth as I did the Iron Girder, so there's not gonna be sort of step-by-step -step videos, but I will do videos on this build as I go through it you know, just various odd jobs and things that I find you, you might find interesting and time lapses and project, regular project updates. I will, I will try and keep you in the loop on it. Uh, it just takes, it takes a lot of time to film things in, in their entirety, you know, every little job filming it completely. Uh, so I hope you understand the reasons for doing that. But that doesn't mean to say that I won't show you this on a regular basis. Uh, so this will be kind of the content for the foreseeable future, which is cool. And yeah, I'm excited to get, get stuck into it, to be honest. I'm probably going to have a look at just seeing what's what today, pulling some parts off and just getting a rough idea. I really want to get a compression test done on the engine just to sort of find out if we really need to get into the top of this engine at all. And if we do, you know, get, get on with that work to make sure that we've got a a solid, a solid heart for the bike before we actually pile a load of a load of cash into buying parts and things. 
so yeah i hope that sounds good to you and i hope you're keen to join along join me and ian for this project and, and keep a, a track on us um i don't think we're going to set any kind of timeline or deadline for this build uh, but it would be nice to see this on the road by the end of the summer perhaps some late summer rides would be cool so we're we've got a bit of time in our hands so we're just gonna fire in ian's keen to to get on with you know stripping it down and and buying parts and starting to see this thing come together so i'm keen to to get on working on it anyway waffle over please do like comment and subscribe to the channel to to keep up to date with this build and to check out all my other videos and i will hopefully see you in the not too distant future with an update on the kawasaki z400 from 1979 cool bye oh, oh before you go check this out What? Is that a welder that actually takes gas? Yes it is. Eagle-eyed viewers may recognise this from when I did the trellising work on the GS500 build. I borrowed this from a friend and he has recently just moved and needed to get rid of a welder. So I've taken this off his hands for a very reasonable price. Thank you very much Colin. And yeah, I'm excited to see you know, my welding improve and practice a little bit more on the new build. Psyched.